This problem asks us to determine the class width, the class boundaries, and the relative frequencies for the following frequency table. We just kind of focus on these two items, the class width and the class boundaries. That's why I've underlined them here. Before we begin, we should go over some terminology. These categories are called classes, as in classification. This first number, 60, is called the lower class limit of the first class. And this number, 63.9, is called the upper class limit of the first class. The number down here, 64, is the lower class limit of the second class, and 67.9 is the upper class limit of the second class, and then so on and so forth throughout the table. The frequency column lists how many, in this case, men, have heights in this range. So for example, four men had heights between 60 and 63.9 inches, and then so on and so on throughout. Okay, the class width, the first part of the problem, is an easy part. I've joined these two numbers together to indicate how you do the calculation for the class width. All you have to do is to, is to subtract 64 and 60. So if I take the number 64 and I subtract off 60, I'll be left with the difference of 4. And that difference is the class width. You can actually find that by subtracting any two consecutive lower class limits or consecutive upper class limits. As long as they follow one after the other, when you subtract them, you will get 4 because that's the class width that's been used to create the table. All we're doing is identifying the class width that somebody used to create this table. All right, the class boundaries are considerably harder than that, and I've listed the steps here, as you can see, so that um, you didn't have to watch me write them all out. So it's a good idea probably at this moment to pause the video and take a moment to write these steps down so that you can follow on later without having to write them. Okay, so once these are all written down, um, let's go over them and see how they're done. They're actually very easy to do, probably harder to write than actually to do. So the first one says subtract the upper class limit for the first class from the lower class limit for the second class. So in this case, the, um, the numbers that we're dealing with, the upper class limit for the first class, that's the 63.9, which I've circled already. And then we have the lower class limit for the second class. That lower class limit for the second class is 64. So again, upper class limit for the first class from the lower class limit for the second class. All right, so we're going to subtract those two numbers. So that'll be 64 minus 63.9. And when we do that, we get a difference of 0 0.10. Now in the next step, we simply divide the result we found in step one by the number two. So we divide the step here, divide the number here in half. So we're going to have 0 0.10 divided by two, which will give us 0 0.05. Okay, this number here, 0 0.05, ends up being a very important number because we use it in the third and final step to generate all our class boundaries, which we'll fill in here, which I've made a little place to put them. Okay, so subtract the result from our first lower class limit and add it to all the other upper class limits. So we're going to take this number, the 0 0.05, and we're going to subtract that result from our first lower class limit. So in other words, we're going to take 0 0.05 and subtract it from 60. And if you do that, you're going to get 59.95. All right, so that's the first one. That's our first boundary. To get the second boundary and to get all the others that are going to be down in this column, we're going to add the same 0 0.05 to all of the upper class limits. So I say 0 0.05 added to each of these numbers. So that'll be 63.95, 67 65.95, 71.95, 75.95, and 79.95. Okay, now you may be wondering where are these other boundaries going to come from? They are actually just these guys repeated over in that position. So that means this 63.95 will be written down here. So we just copy the number on the diagonal. 67.95, 71.95, and 75.95. So you may be saying, well, that's weird. The categories now overlap. They didn't overlap here. These are all separate and distinct, but here they overlap. This last number is the start of this next category. Well, that's the whole point of the boundaries. That's why we formed the boundaries in the first place, because we're going to do a special graph called a histogram with them, 
and that graph is like a bar chart that doesn't have spaces between the bars. By removing these tiny spaces between one class and the next class, by making them overlap like this, that means the bar in the graphs, the bars in the graph will all touch. And that's the whole purpose of forming the boundaries.